Hey, what up, saints and people of the world? Time to get into another episode today. All right, this time we're going to go over self-control. Self-control, all right? I think it's really in, important to encourage everyone, including myself, and remind that we do have the spirit of self-control. And when we maneuver out in this world, and when Satan comes from us and tries to tempt us to sin and to transgress against the Most High God, it's most important to realize that we do have self-control and we do not have to give in to that temptation daily. We can do this daily to the day that we die. All right. So we're just going to get into some scriptures. Now, I want to start. I want to now I'm going to go through a few scriptures because this is a, a subject that can be very lengthy. And I'm trying not to make a two hour video on y'all. So we're just going to get into some scripture and we're going to chop it up a little bit. All right. All right, so this is going to be a heavy episode. It's going to be real heavy today. All right, so we're going to get into Proverbs verse 25, 28. It's from the Old Testament. Now, this is what it says. It says, he who has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Okay, no protection. City without walls in those times is broken down. They have no protection. All right. And that's what it is. You have no protection. If you can't guard your own spirit and have self-control, you know, the evil one can come right at you and get you to do all kinds of strange things that you ain't got no business doing. And that, that'll upset God and have a real fear set you. And you know, with the Lord can come some consequences, some that you can't get up out of, some that you can't come back from, literally. All right? Proverbs 16, 32. It says, He... Who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. I'm gonna flip on over to the New Testament. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 13. It says, No temptation has taken you except what is common to man. And I get that. No temptation has taken you except what is common to man. God is faithful, and he would not permit you to be tempted. But what above what you can endure, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. All right. With that temptation, God would definitely make a way for you to escape. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've went through some times where I had no business sinning. OK, we never have any business sinning, but I knew better. OK, and I use some some experiences as a really uh you know an excuse to sin and i had no excuse because there ain't none but i'm gonna tell you every time that i did there was always a way out a way out could be not answering the phone not calling somebody don't answer the door cut the person off shouldn't probably be around that crowd anyway plenty of time plenty plenty of, even when they even when it got close just don't do it send them home Whatever it may be, don't go there. Don't go that. Go back home. Plenty of our, it's always an escape. Shut your mouth. Don't talk. Don't say nothing. Nothing going to make you move your mouth. Just don't say nothing. All right? Don't strike a man. Walk away. It's always an escape from temptation. Always. There's no excuse to sin. All right? So, you know, those that believe in that Calvinistic doctrine that we gonna sin anyway, we all want once saved, always say you gonna sin anyway. And that's ridiculous because there's a way out of sinning. It is. It's called don't do it. It's called self control. So when people teach that you are gonna sin, and let me tell you, don't nobody sin but a sinner. That's it. That's it. That's 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 just where it stops. Let's get back into some scriptures. Galatians five twenty two twenty three. It says, "But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace." Ooh, that sounds good. Patience. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Second Timothy one seven. For God has given us a, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love. And get this, self-control. How do you stop sinning? Self-control. 2 Peter 1, 4 through 7. By which he has given to us exceedingly great, precious promises, so that through these things you might 
become partakers of the divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through us. For this reason, make every effort to add virtue to your faith and to your virtue knowledge and to your knowledge self-control and to your self-control patience, endurance, and to your patience, endurance, godliness, and to your godliness, brotherly kindness, and to your brotherly kindness, love, kindness, love. It's going over here to 1 Corinthians 9, 24, 27. And it says, do you not know that all those who run in a race run, but one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Everyone who strives for the prize exercises self-control in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible one. So therefore I run not with uncertainty, but I fight not as one who beats the air, but as I bring and keep my body under subjection. That's when preaching to look at it. That's when preaching to others, I myself should be dis qualified all right disqualified don't ever be ashamed don't ever be ashamed in your heart that you ain't sinning okay and somebody have you sinned today no i ain't, I ain't sinning. i've been i've been trying i've been working hard for those oh you don't sin today don't say that and then, you know the, the devil will make you feel you know the devil will try some tricks to make you feel like um you know you shouldn't you, you make you feel like it's wrong because you can boldly say you you ain't sinning. You're not living like sin. Oh, you sinning? You doing some sinning? And then eventually it gets you to do some sinning because that's how Satan works. He wants you to have doubt. That's and he works through people and he will work through people in the Lord's church, and they'll do some crafty things. Oh yeah, some crafty things, some things that get you uh, like you ever seen on TV when they have the ask the person who you vote for today. Now. You know it's a chance that the person they said they ain't vote for, they're going to say they voted for because they know if one of those candidates is not a popular figure, they have fear of being maybe um, condemned by people because they voted for us. So they'll lie and say they vote somebody else. So, you know, somebody might say, hell, who, who sinned today? And, you know, everybody keeping their hands down because they fear if they raise their hand. They feel like the fix is in. They're oh y'all you then here here come here oh you so you say you ain't sin today embarrassing you in front of everybody or oh, ain't nobody that's 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 tactics, and so you have to get away from those things all right and get around like minded saints and like minded Christians who with you are trying not to sin who believe when the Lord says you have self control in His Word through through Paul or Peter or whoever. They believe in these things and they practice them because we should be bold, not in sinning. We should be bold and not sinning. OK, Romans 16, 17, I believe when it talks about uh, Mark, those uh, uh, bring not this doctrine. I can't say verbatim. I don't want to. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. But I think somewhere in there, Romans 16, it says that uh, by flattering speeches that they see the heart is simple. And then somewhere else down there, it says you know, basically don't be um, Romans 16, go after 16, 17, 18, 19, in that little pocket of scriptures, 17, 18, it says, uh, you know, you want to basically don't don't have knowledge of sin. No, you know what I'm saying? You want to be simple to evil. No, you should be simple minded to sin, meaning you shouldn't even have no knowledge of it. You know, the latest trends of sin and all that. You shouldn't even know, know nothing about that. Basically, with the sin, you're supposed to have you're supposed to have knowledge and doing good. All right. Let's go over down here to Titus 1, 7, 8, okay? It says, For an overseer must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not easy angered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not greedy for dishonest gain, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, self-control, just holy temper. And this is for an overseer, all right? Overseer, like elders. That's what they're supposed to be. But we, you see, for them, for us, Self-control. Exactly what we're supposed to have. All right? Now, a person say, man, man, we born sinners. We're born. We can't do. Okay, well, let's see what Ecclesi uh, Ecclesiastes says, 729. It says, see this, only have I found. He said, see this, only have I, only have I found. Do you know what only means? Only means only. I found me nothing else. That God have made man upright. That means you ain't born as a sinner. He made you upright. 
but they have sought out many schemes, all right? Now, there's a lot of controversy. People are born a certain way. They you know you ain't born that way. You learned that way. You learned it. Somebody did something to you, but you won't be made. You might not have memory of Sometimes you don't have childhood memories of things, but you ain't born that way. Okay? So it's important to understand these things. Okay? And you know, you, you think, I'm a, we're going to go over, let's go over to Hebrews, right? Because I pronounce out Hebrews too. I'm going to go over Hebrews. Look what Hebrews 4 says. Hebrews chapter 4. It says, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest remains, let us fear lest any of you should come short of it. So that doctrine of you're going to sin, you're gonna keep, you can't help sinning, that's ridiculous doctrine. Okay, because that's coming short. And you see right here, you, you, come, you can't come short of it. Okay? But we got self-control. So how, how can you just, you're going to sin and you sinning if you got self-control? That don't make sense. Some ain't adding up on that. All right? But see, you know, when a person is sinning, no sinner wants to be alone. Nobody want to go to hell alone. So... I'm sinning. I got some things I can't get over. So you got to be sinning too, because I'm holier than you. So if I can, if I'm sinning, I know you sinning. That's that's the attitude that really comes in there. Or um, I'm afraid to teach truth and teach that we got to stop sinning because I don't want to run nobody away. So I'm going to compromise and say, you know, yeah, you're going to keep sinning. Just so, you know, the person who says, no, I don't want to get baptized, but I know I, I ain't got the strength to repent. Well, you're going you gonna to sin anyway. Oh, really? Okay, I'll get baptized. And and, and this, for whatever reason, so I just come to services. That's all. That's really what it's all about, especially here in America. I'm gonna be honest with you. We one of the youngest countries, and the way we do things is so business minded, and it's so much like the denomination. It can be some some of us can be like the denominational world, and learn from them. And it's just all about seats, butts in the seats. We don't even know why we're there. We're there to worship God, and God. We have to earn, we, we earn, we not earn that right, but we have to do what's acceptable throughout the rest of the week. So we come to him in a worthy manner to worship him. Let's go over to Hebrews 9, 26. It says for then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the world was created. But now he has appeared once at the end of ages to put away sin. That's why I printed it out. I want to get to that part, to put away sin by sacrificing himself. Let us firmly hold the profession of our faith without wavering. For he who promises is faithful. And let us consider how to spur one another to love and good works. All right. So now I'm getting to uh, Hebrews 10. Let us not forsake the assembling of others together, as is the manner of some. Let us exhort one another. That's encouraged. Especially as you see the day, that the day approaching. Especially as you see the day approaching. All right. Um, for if we willfully continue to sin after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice of sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which would devour the adversaries. Anyone who despised Moses' law died without mercy in the presence of two or three witnesses. How much more severe a punishment do you suppose he deserves who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded the blood of the covenant and sacrificed him to be a common thing and has insulted? Look at this. Look at insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. And again, he says, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I'm tell you, it is. You have no, uh, you have no certainty, no certainty of life when you do. I'm gonna tell you, man. You have no certainty, certainty of life when you're doing. I can't talk today, y'all. You have, you cannot be certain of anything when you fall in that way. You have no, you have no, no confidence. You don't know what's gonna happen to you because you know the Lord ain't with you, and anything happen to you, you gonna be driving and swerve up and be dead. Walk out, fall, bust your head, dead, crack your neck. Anything can happen. You And then you know you die in a sinful state. We know where we going, I included. We know we ain't going to heaven. We know we ain't going to paradise. We know we're going to the torment side of hell and to the lake of fire after judgment day. So we must, you know, you, you don't want to fall into that. Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth when it comes to self-control, man. God ain't going to listen. <laughs> 
look at here, man. God ain't gonna put some kind of magic spill in your brain and control you for yourself. You got we're you have to show that you can have self control. She gave you self control already. You have to show that you want it, that you want to be his. All right. Satan is not gonna make the girls. Let me tell you something. The delivery man ain't gonna look less handsome. The delivery girl ain't gonna let look less pretty. Ain't nobody gonna put on clothes. It's gonna it's gonna be leggings and short shorts. It's gonna be muscle shorts. It's gonna be everything that can entice you and tempt you. Ain't none of that going away. But you gotta have your self control and prove it that God is worth more than stepping out on your husband or your wife for some temporary pleasure. Okay, you gotta show that God is worth more. Than going somewhere and doing violence or shooting somebody or robbing somebody because you ain't got enough money or lying or cheating somebody or stealing. All right. He needs to know that he's worth more than you lying. All right. And all that stuff going to be tempted. Temptation. That's all it's going to be lying. You got to show him. You got to do something. We, I, no matter what happens, I'm faithful in you, Lord. Okay. Oh, man. Somebody did me wrong. But I know you're going to do me right. So I ain't even going to get revenge. I ain't going to act up. I ain't going to use no excuse. All right? None of that's going to stop. And it brings back to the point. No, you are not sinners. No, we are not supposed to be sinning. Some of you do not sin. I believe that wholeheartedly. I want to believe it. But there will be people that tell that you can't stop sinning. And then they and then they will wonder why people don't ain't growing spiritually in the church. Spiritually. Because all they do is come to Bible study, service. That's 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 giving the Lord, giving the Lord some of their time. I just gotta come, I, I come to Bible, I'm, I'll come to Bible study, but you ain't learning nothing. Because nobody's grabbing a hold of them and teaching them. Really teaching them and showing them because we gonna sin already. We gonna sin no matter what. Then what's the point? Why did we come to church because we gonna sin no matter? Why did we get married? Don't even, why, why waste time in doing that? Just stay, stay living together. Get you a girl. Get you a boyfriend. When you get done with them, just get another one because you are gonna sin no matter what. Why we go ahead? Why stop drinking? Why stop doing it? You gonna sin no matter what? Why come at any time? Why you read the Bible? Why you praying? Why you, why you repenting? Do, do we not know what repent mean? To turn away? We don't know what that means. I don't even think we know what sin means. I don't think nobody even knows the definition of sin by the way that things are taught this day. What's the point? What's the point of learning? If we don't sin anyway. What could Jesus go to the cross for if we going to sin anyway? Huh? All right. John 9, 31 says this. We know that God does not listen to sinners. But if anyone is a worship of God and does his will, he hears him. His will is for us. If one of his will, stop sinning. What are we praying for together then? That prayer ain't heard because we sinning. So the, the beginning prayer and the end prayer ain't heard at all. Nobody who leading it because we all sinners, right? What's the point? No, we're not all, No, we're not supposed to be sinners. No, we are not all sinners. Boldly. Sinners are sinners. Christians are supposed to be like Christ. Christian, Christ-like. And in Christ, there was no sin. John 8, 10, 11. Let's see what God, let's see what the Lord, let's see what the word of God says in these matters. We've already been seeing. Let's see some more. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, this 8, 11. I think he's dealing with the woman caught in adultery. What did he say? When Jesus had stood up and saw no one but the woman. John 8, verse 10 through 11. He said to her, woman, where are your accusers? Did no one condemn you? He said, no one, Lord. Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go. And do what you want to do. That ain't what he said. He said, go and sin no more. Means what it means. Now, people there try to tell you, man, that means me going and don't just live a lifestyle of sin. A lifestyle of sinning is sinning. Ain't, ain't no, you know, Americans, they good. They got, they got this thing called white lie or something like that. Where it's like, you tell a little lie. It ain't as bad as the other one. And a lie is a lie. And sinning is sinning. When you're sinning, you're living a lifestyle of sin. You know, a great mystery I heard some people say. They say, man. And I wonder how it works, man. They say Jesus, you get the Holy Spirit, but sin takes us away from God's presence. So what happens when we, we sin and, 
he, we out of his presence, then we repent, we back, then we see him, and we repent, and we, then he back in our presence, and he comes back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Like, he goes like a revolving door. Let me tell you what I believe on this, and this is me. Then I, this is I, the evidence I see from reading the scriptures. This is the evidence I see. When we sin, and you go say, oh, forgive me, Lord. And then two weeks later, you sin again, forgive me, Lord. Two weeks again, or a week later, you sin again. In two days, sin. And is he every is he coming back in? No, God ain't God ain't crazy. God knows all. He knows that heart. Just because you ask for forgiveness, don't mean you repent it. So you know what? If you did that for a whole year, guess what? He probably wasn't with you that whole year until you finally to that to the to year two when you finally stop doing it and exercise some self control. Because see, we think just because you know you stay in the house, I ain't sin. But every time, man, I, I can't stop. Man, I, when I stay in the house, I don't sin. But then when I go over here, man, I go to the store, I'm sinning. Because you ain't using self-control, brother or sister. So he ain't with you the whole time. Just because you went and said, forgive me, don't mean he is with you. Yeah, you might have lived and got some blessings. The rich man, why we read in Luke 16, he got blessings too. He ain't with the hell. He just not with you. God ain't crazy. He ain't. Holy Spirit going, going in, you're coming out, you're coming back in. No, he just ain't with you the whole time until he really know that you really repented. And you really stopped. That's when he with us, up with us. We can see in the scriptures. God is, God is not, he's not, he's not, with, he's not equally yoked with no sin and darkness. We know that. So that's how that goes. He give us mercy to get right. Now, yeah, he might not be with you, but he still give you mercy. Okay, this is my son. He got, I'm going to see if he's going to give him some mercy. I'm going to give him some time to, to, to straighten up. But I ain't with him right now. I'm going to give him some time to straighten up before I require his soul. Let's get back into these scriptures, man. So, go sin no more. John 8, 10 to 11. John 5, 14. I think this is when Jesus healed the lame man. It said, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have become whole. Sin no more. Now, this is for the crowd that says, when you say sin no more, that just means, you know, don't keep on practicing a whole bunch of sins. Go sin no more, lest something worse happens to you. He gave a warning with that one. Come on, don't play with God. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Because, see, Matthew, no, we gonna, let's go to Matthew 5, 14, 16. What does Matthew 5, 14? What is, what is one of our jobs as Christians? It says, you are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a basket, but on a candlestick, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Good works. Is sin at any time good works? I don't think so. Well, so, look, okay, but hold on now. Wait, 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 wait. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 say this. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? Uh, hold on now. Sin is darkness. Now, hold, hold on. What communion has light with darkness? Now, now, hold on. You in the light sinning? You in the light sinning? You exposing yourself? No. Oh. No, no, no. No, we're going to do We're going to go down to Matthew 7, too, because I love this. Oh, I love this. Um, un, uh, people teach this in the era of talking about denomination. Let me tell you something. The Lord has one bride, and he don't commit adultery. Anything that's not his bride is a harlot. Understand that. That's harlots. He ain't looking no harlots. He ain't speaking to no harlots. When man goes home, you you pass by, and it's a harlot selling her by in the corner. You went home, man, talking about the harlot. Man, that harlot, man. You don't even see him. All right? Jesus is talking about those who are supposed to be in the Lord's church, the church of Christ. Let's go ahead and read it. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonderful works in your name? But then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice evil. Sin is evil. If we practice sin, we're doing evil. They ain't talking about people teach. I can't stand when somebody does teaches that and they want to make a point against. Don't know how to teach against denomination. Don't you know teach the denominations teach against themselves? That's easy. It ain't so easy to teach against that. You just gotta have a Bible. I mean, that's easy. They're not. Oh, oh man. 
But they'll flip this verse in a hundred ways and make that about the denomination. That is not what that's about. That's about the church. All right. So simple. But they say, I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna, I, first Peter 4, 18. I'm about to read that because that's one of the scariest things. Man, this gets me. This gets me every time it says. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's going to say the little part where he says, and if the righteous one is scarcely saved, who shall the ungodly in the sinner, where shall the ungodly in the sinner appear? The righteous is scarcely saved. You want to know why the righteous is scarcely saved? Because you got a lot of people who aren't growing because people are teaching that you going to sin no matter what. You can't stop sinning. You once saved, always saved. Because you're sinning right now. You can't stop sinning. And that's just what it is. Okay. Let's go over to Romans 3. Romans 3 is always taken, uh, as always, man, this is one day that provides the sin path like no other. And it's done in conjunction with the first John and all that. We about to get all, we got to put all that to rest right now. Let's go ahead and put all that to rest with the Bible. Let's go to Romans 3. Um, we going to uh, get into this right now. Chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 9, it says, What then? Are we better than they? No, not at all. For we have already charged that both Jews and Gentiles are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become worthless. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Their throats are an open grave. With their, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of vipers under their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their paths. And they do not know the way of peace. There is no fear of God in there before their eyes. Now, you got to apply hermeneutics when you read the Bible. Here a little, there a little. Um, we need to understand that Paul is talking in past tense here. And he's quoting something. How does he say this and why? What's the context of the? Well, he's, po he's quoting Psalm 53. Let's read Psalm 53, some of it. It says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and they have done apparent injustice. There is no, there is none who does good. God looked down from heaven on the children of men and to see if there were any who have insight who see God. Every one of them turned aside. They are all together corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Now, when you read your Old Testament, you can see why God would say this, with all the sinning they was doing. This is past tense. That's why it's Paul saying this. The contents, the content of this, a context, I mean, is he's telling the Jews, you can't get on, you can't say that the Gentiles ain't worthy of salvation because what they don't did, because look what you don't did. That's the context. You can't use that as a sin pass, a sin pass, oh, we know it's good. You can't say that and you can't speak for everybody what they doing because you're not God. Let none of us, you or I, ever get arrogant enough to say, I know you're sinning. If you say you ain't sinning, you don't we are not God. We do not know what no one is doing. Let us never get that arrogant. We need to be preaching against sin, not trying to figure out who's not trying to preach that you are sinning. Don't know. Why don't you find out who's sinning then? Go to the brothers and get in their lifestyles then. Spend more time with us. Let's spend more time with each other, then we can see who's sinning. And then we can try to heal that brother from sinning no more. That's what we need to be doing instead of assuming that we sin. Romans 3.23, this is also another one that they use for the sin pass. It's past the sin, you can sin no matter what. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now that's the same chapter 3. Now why would he have to say that? He's letting them know, man, all don't sin. It ain't just the Gentiles, Jews don't sin, everybody. So what you talking about? They can have salvation too context that's what that's for let us not flip verses to create a past or something like the denominational world does let's go ahead and get right back into it now let's talk about sin james 1 13 to 15 says this let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted by god for god cannot be tempted with evil neither does he tempt anyone but each man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed Okay, you get lust at tight. You got something in you. Then, when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Now, if we're dead, and that bring, if we're sinning, how can we live if we're dead? Because the going to rest, we live with the Lord. But how can we do that if we're dead? Okay, so, you know, actually, there is a repent. Now, if it's a repent of sins, then why are we still sinning? We're supposed to repent. That's, that means to turn away. 
Okay. Now I'm not saying that it ain't possible for a Christian to somebody to backtrack and slide out of it. I hey, I I tell you that firsthand that 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 can happen, but it ain't supposed to happen. It ain't normal to happen. It can happen, but it ain't supposed to. That's the difference. So if you say somebody's supposed to happen, they always go back. What well, did you see? That's re that's something Satan does, right? Instead of just hearing God's word and accepting it, the first thing they say, did you sin? Have you seen today? That's what that's what a denomination does, right? When you tell them you can't have musical instruments and all that, that's what they do, right? That's what the devil does. Instead of saying, yeah, we can't sin, man. Well, you know, uh, let's, man, we need to stop sinning. Well, look, man, I got some things I'm struggling with, man. Hey, can you help me out, brother? Let's, let's get together, man. Let's do something. Let's spend some more time together because I know I'm weak in this area. And when I'm in this area, let's spend some time together. Or check up on me, man. I know it, 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 at 9 o'clock, man, I know I get a little lonely. I'm single. You know what I'm saying? Come, just come holler at me, man. Maybe do a little prayer, you know? That's my weak times. And then the other brother said, I do all that too. But brother, you still got to have self-control. You're going to have to fight it. Got to have that self-control because I won't always be able to call you. And I won't always, when somebody might, I might die one day and I won't always be there. So you got to have self-control. But I'm going to help you out still. We're going to practice not sinning together. And I'm going to not sin so I can, and I can show you and I can encourage you not to sin. You can be the example. Okay? When we get together, we won't do no sin. So that's how it's supposed to be. But, you know, whatever. When a person want to sin, they're going to sin. When a person don't want to change, they ain't going to change. Let's go ahead and get the first John, because this one really is really one that um, I think is misunderstood. Um, and when you keep reading what John is doing, you can you can kind of see he ain't saying what people are saying he's saying. So let's go ahead. You know, first John kind of reads like he's addressing certain things, kind of like how the Corinthian letters are. When you read it, it's like he's addressing some things. Now, remember, I want you to keep in mind we read in Romans. Paul said that because it was written. He's saying that. He's saying that in the past tense. Let's go ahead to John. It says, 1 John 5, it says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Okay. That's pretty, that, it means what it means. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one, one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses all from sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So, yes, yeah, so if we have no sin, you know, everybody, you got some sin. That don't mean you're sinning. That's not what that means, okay? You got some things that can cause you to sin. You got some things, you got some temptations in there. But that don't mean you have to sin. Maybe, you know, I've sinned before becoming a Christian, okay? Now, also consider this, who his audience is. It has been said that we have some sin. We can read in the scriptures that we have. He's talking past tense. If we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. If we say we have not sinned, past tense, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. If we say we have not sinned, that's not saying like presently. It can be, it's, we can read where we have sinned in the past. He's talking to a whole audience in here. Okay. Just keep on reading though. It says, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you do not sin. So no, you're not going to keep on sinning. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Now, just because if we so, listen, he's saying if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. That's still not a path to sin. He said, you know, you don't sin. You mess up. You just, you ain't grew enough. Your self-control ain't there, man. You can be forgiven. You can we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Now, what he doesn't say in there is you're going to have to repent from it. Stop doing it. He don't have to say because it's already been said in Acts 2.38. It's already been said in other places you got to stop sinning. So he, has to, he don't have to keep saying that. This is like in other spots. When Philip with the eunuch, when the eunuch stopped, he said, you know, here's water. What hinders me? He said, you believe on the Lord all your heart. He didn't have to say, and if you repent, because believe on the Lord all your heart is repenting. There's some stuff he didn't have to say again. The Holy Spirit, when when this has been written, it didn't have to keep saying the whole, whole thing all over again. All right? Now, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay? That is true. He did die for our sins to save us from it. We just read in Hebrew. He came to put sin away, to get rid of it. That's very important. Okay? This is where he said, now, you got to keep on reading. It says, by this we know that we... Now, this is, like I said, First John. I'm going to say chapter 2. By this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Now, what's the opposite of not keeping his commandments? Sinning. It's sinning. Okay? 
We know if we keep his commandments. Whoever says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word truly has the love of God perfected in him. By this we know we are in him. Whoever says he remains in him ought to walk as he walked. Jesus did not sin. Ought to walk as he walked. 1 John 3, 4 to 6. Whoever practices sin breaks the law. For sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. Whooever remains in him does not sin. Whoever sins has not seen him and does not know him. It's really I ain't got to even talk on that. That, that was just plain. 1 John 3, 7 to 10. Little children, let no one deceive you. The one who practice, who does the one who does righteous is righteous, at, just as Christ is righteous. Whoever practices sin is of the devil. Whoever practices sin is of the devil. I'm going to say it again. Whoever practices sin is of the devil. When I practiced sin, I was of the devil. Whether I was baptized or not. When I practiced sin as a baptized individual, I was of the devil. All right? That's, that's how it goes. No way around it. All right? All right. It says, uh... Whoever practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. For the purpose of the Son of God was revealed, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not practice sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot keep on sinning. Oh, let's read that again. This is verse 9, 1 John 3. Whoever has been born of God does not practice sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot keep on sinning. 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 Because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are revealed. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are revealed. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are revealed. Whoever does not live righteous, who live in righteousness, is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. I'm gonna skip on to 1 John 5 2 4. It says, By this way we know we love the children of God. We when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Do you know what that means? It means it's not hard to do. It really ain't. We don't keep, we don't keep his commandments because we just don't want to. It ain't hard to do. We just don't do it because we don't want to. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And the victory that overcomes the world is our faith. Now, I remember Paul talking about running our race. Okay, you got to do preparations. You got you to gotta examine. You got to do preparations. You got to watch what you're doing. You got to practice not sinning. The opposite of practice sinning is practice not sinning. Think, think before you talk. Think before you do. Okay? Remind yourself. This is Holler Tree. I can't do that. What's going to happen? I give it down to sin. Nah. Let me look away from her. Let me look away from him. I'm married. I, I, my husband, my wife, that's I gave a vow. You know, I ain't going to cheat on them or whatever, or wherever I'm doing. We unmarried. If I want to have sex, I need to get married. If I can't see myself marrying this woman or man, or, I mean, if you're a woman being right, if marrying this man, if you are a woman, and marrying this woman, if you're a man, then, you know, why am I with him? Why am I with him? If I can't I see myself marrying So, that's things we have to say inside ourselves. I'm with him because I'm not going to fornicate with him. That's why. So, we got to check ourselves on that. We know that whoever is born of God does not keep on sinning, but whoever is born of God guards himself, and the wicked one cannot touch him. Guards himself, self control, guarding yourself. I mean, God. I mean, the word of God is showing us. It's just giving us all of the cheat codes of how not to sin. John nine eleven. Where's John nine eleven? Okay, it says, uh, whoever. No, this ain't first John. I think it's three John. I think I left it off on here. Three John nine eleven. I want to believe. Correct me in the, in the comments if I am. I'm just a man, and I'm humble enough. I say, okay, I, I said the wrong one. I'm happy to accept the correction, and I'll come back on the next video and say I messed up. Three John nine eleven. Whoever transgresses does not remain in the teaching of Christ. Whoever transgresses and and does not remain in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever remains in the teaching of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive them in your house nor greet them. For whoever greets them takes part in evil deeds. That's the doctrine. So you can't teach that you're going to sin and go to heaven. You're going to keep on sinning. You can't teach that. You can't. 
You know, so I think people think remaining in the doctrine of Christ is just showing up to worship on Sundays. And that's where the error comes from. And that's the Americanization of everything, right? That's how they, you know, that's how the nomination, nomination teach. As long as you show up on Sunday, you have done your job. You don't gave God some of your time. You're good. Go watch my first video, lest I tear you to pieces, okay? You know, that, that's what God said. You thought I was all together with you, you know, because I kept silent. You know, consider this, lest I tear you to pieces. Get right. That's what I'm paraphrasing. Um, God don't need none of us, our time, my time. He, who wants our righteousness, folks? Um, just because I come to worship on Wednesday and Sunday and Sunday morning, if I'm not living righteous, I'm doing nothing. Okay. When it tells you about taking the, taking the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, when it says, that's why some of you are sick now, they're talking about spiritually sick. All right. If I go around doing whatever I want throughout the week, and then I come, when I come to worship on Sunday, not saying I can't be there, but I'm doing it in an unworthy manner. The, the worship is not accepted to God. He's not going to accept my worship. He's not. Okay? It's good for me to keep him going. Maybe I can get out of that phase, but I'm also not going to get out of that phase just hearing a, a sermon here and some Bible studies. I need to read my Bible. I need to really get to know my God by reading my Bible. And now I ain't talking about doing some reading program that like Bible gave it to you read this here, read that there. No, I need to get down and cut that TV off. I need to get down in that Bible. Just like I'm going to read my instruction manual for my TV stand, <laughs> video game. If I buy a new firearm, back, whatever I got to put together, kids bump beds. I need to read my Bible and get to know my God. That's how you learn. You won't, if you all you do is go to us um, here and there, and you read your Bible sometimes, you ain't gonna never grow. I know for a fact you ain't. I, I didn't grow up. It took, I stumped my growth for a while because I got into that habit. Now I had to get back on to y'all. I had to get in my Bible. I had to be up in my Bible and I had to practice not sinning. And I had to go out and teach others. All right, you dig? That's what you got to do. All right? Um, so we need to understand that. And to me, it kind of reads like John is talking to the Jews too. It's just like, um, so that's when you read some of that stuff where it says from the beginning and, you know, for his name's sake, they went out and uh, receiving no help from the Gentiles. And that could be like spiritual Gentiles, like he might have not saved. But from the way I read it, it sounds like he's talking to Jews. And that's why he said we have no sin, just like Paul was doing. But nevertheless, no matter all that, it's too many scriptures and too many verses that say we ain't supposed to be sinning. So, um, yeah, I don't know who said, you know, I don't know. I can't speak on what you did before you got baptized. I'm not God and I ain't going to do it. But when I think I know that can't be undisputed, when we get baptized, we ain't supposed to be sinning. Is it possible that we can sin? It is possible, meaning we have the ability to still sin because the Satan is going to tempt us even heavier. Gonna tempt us heavier. He's going to be on. He's going to lay it on you. I'm telling you, everybody's going to look more attractive to you. Everything's going to look better, more tempting. He gonna be coming for that head. I mean, you know this. We know this. Look what he did with Jesus. He offered him everything. We're gonna take you on the mountain, show you everything, the whole city. It's the same thing. Okay. So it's like this. We ain't supposed to be sinning. We gotta grow out of that. We gotta stop right now. All right. Right now, as you see this, hear this video. Right now, make up your mind. We gotta stop. And then if we make up our mind, because it's a contradiction to teach. You know what Joshua said. You know, make up your mind who you're gonna serve. But then it, on, out one ear, out one breath, the next words is, but you're gonna keep on sinning. No, nah, then ain't nobody made up their mind to stop. Okay, you don't have to curse. You don't have to fornicate. You don't have to lie. You don't have to get angry. He told you. I, just go to the first video. Go to Luke six. Go to Romans twelve. Go to Proverbs twenty five. He tells you how to deal with people. Deal with them. You got to suck it up. Don't get emotional. Control your emotions and do what the Lord says. The joy is in doing good. I'm going to tell you, I had to do a few times. I don't have people trying to get me in trouble, things I didn't do because you know, I'm a manager. I had all kind of things happen. But man, when I could save their jobs, even though they wanted to take away mine, man, the way I feel after that, man, I feel like I was flying. It's a beautiful experience. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You don't have to curse when somebody get in front of you in the traffic. You don't have to get drunk. I can't say you can't drink wine. People get legalistic on that. The Bible don't say 
There, there are certain people who say don't be it said don't be given too much wine, but I cannot. I would be lying if I tried to preach a sermon that said you can't drink wine at all. That'd be a lie and it'd be legalistic. I'm not God and I don't try to play God. Okay, you can't stop nobody from doing nothing. Okay, but don't be giving them much wine. You ain't got to drink no beer. You ain't got to get high on drugs. You ain't got to go to the strip club. You ain't got to go to the regular club. You ain't got to go to the bar. You like music. You ain't got to go play at a bar. You can you can do a YouTube concert. You want some music? Get you get you a camera and get you a backdrop and do your music on YouTube and throw a YouTube concert. Do it live. People gonna love it. And they get you a Patreon probably or something like that. Monetize your video. Make you a couple ducats. There's plenty of ways to do things the right way. Say you're going to attempt to do everything, man. You got to you like music. You go to that club, right? No, you ain't got to do all that. I got a brother right now. Say so he went downtown outside and just played. And people was throwing him money. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> he making a living. He's working. You take all that and blowing that sacrifice. It takes some muscles to do that. That brother was working, so he should, yeah, they paid him. He entertained him, they paid him. Ain't no sin in that. He went in no club. There's plenty to do. Plenty to do. Man, this stuff ain't hard, man. It's hard when you want to do it, man. You got to train yourself. We got to train ourselves out of me, too. I read this video on love, man. I'm telling you. I had. A, I should have said, you know, there was an opportunity recently. I should have said all this, but I didn't have all my scriptures. I ain't had because I knew Satan was about to go to war, and I wasn't prepared because I didn't have all my scriptures ready. I came there, lunch break after work, and I'm like, oh, I should have got. I said, no, I, I'm a little smarter than this. Like, Lord said, be uh, as wise as serpents, but di but as uh, gentle as dust. So I said, okay, I might have to be a little bit wise. I got to go prepare for battle on this subject, and that's what I did. And I'm gonna keep on doing it. I'm gonna keep on, and I'm gonna. It don't matter. But now the next time I hear this doctrine be given up, it's going to be a whole lot of people mad at me. It's going to be, what, this took 46 minutes, 47? It's going to take another. We're going to be in there all night. If we got to. All right, y'all. Y'all be safe, man. I hope this video, uh, you know, I hope it motivated and encouraged y'all. I just want to see everybody get to heaven. And I don't want none of us to be fooled by Satan because he's he going he gonna to definitely try to pull some souls back. So soon, nobody want to burn in here by themselves. He definitely want to do that. So y'all be smooth. This is going to be the, I'm going to try to make this the only video that's long. I'm trying to keep the other ones as motivational, spiritual motivational videos under 15 minutes um, from now on. All right. I'll holler at y'all.